Is that okay? Okay, so our general health um, is shaped by our genetic makeup, but it's also hugely influenced by environmental inputs that are less well characterized and, and comprise things like um, exposures, lifestyle, drugs, and stress. And my lab has been working for a while on a transcription factor, the aryl hydrocarbon receptor, which is a member of a family of transcription factors that are environmental sensors, sensing things like circadian rhythm or, or hypoxia. And for us, the AHR represents a very um, unique molecular entry point for the study of environmental triggers. So the AHR was originally um, studied exclusively in the toxicology field um, in, and is, is known for transmitting the toxic effects of ex environmental pollutants such as dioxin or benzpyrin. But because of its evolutionary con conservation from invertebrate onwards, it was clear that this could not be its only function. And there have been um, many more efforts in, in the last um, five to 10 years to define physiological ligands um, that are recognized by the AHR. And these are some, there's a, there's a, a, a huge range of these, um, some of which are dietary um, in those. And one I will focus on within the talk is this proligand indole free carbinol, which under acidic conditions in the stomach is transformed into potent um, AHR agonists such as X or into um, CYP metabolizing enzyme inhibitors. Tryptophan metabolism um, yields many AHR agonists and this can come again um, from, from dietary intake but also from um, metabolism by our microbiota. Now we have, as I said, we have worked our way through AHR effects in immune cells but ended up in the intestine because it seems that the effects the, uh, of age are, are most pronounced in barrier organs such as the skin, the lung or the intestine. So what we have found out in the intestine just in, as, a, as a summary is that dysregulation of the age uh, pathway causes um, severe detrimental effects such as increased susceptibility to infections loss of IL-22 partly because um, without HR um, some IL-22 producers such as IL-C3s do not survive. Also IELs are um, dependent on, on HR signals for survival. As a consequence we get chronic inflammation due to barrier disruption and an increased risk of colon tumorigenesis. Now, as I mentioned, there was a lot of effort recently to define new ligands for AHR. But there are so many sources of AHR ligands in the body that we think it's unlikely that they are the limiting factors for AHR function. So what is it that really controls physiological AHR functions? And for this, I have to go to the HR pathway to quickly give you an overview. So HR in, um, is normally situated in the, sorry, in the cytoplasm, complex with chaperones that keep it there. And upon ligand um, entry into the cell, ligand binding, it translocates to the nucleus where it dimerizes with its partner aunt, which is also a cofactor for HIF. And this complex then um, binds to so-called dioxin response elements or xenobiotic response elements in the promoters of many genes. And the best studied immediate downstream consequences are the induction of 
three cytochrome P450 enzymes of the family one, as well as the HR repressor. And as you can see, these are all negative regulators of this pathway. And in particularly, we are focusing on CYP101, which results in ligand metabolism and thereby terminating the signal for HR activation. So it appears that it is really important to turn off HR relatively quickly. And there's a huge emphasis on these negative feedback pathways. And this is um, an example of a model, there is no, no structure for this yet, of FITS modeled into CYP1A1. And the, the main um, argument I want to make here is that physiological ligands such as tryptophan metabolites or these dietary indoles and flavones are very good substrates for these CYP enzymes and are therefore rapidly metabolized. Whereas the prototypic agonist dioxin and many of the environmental pollutants are poorly metabolized and therefore result in prolonged HR activation. And it's becoming increasingly clear that this may really be one of the major bases for the perturbation of uh, on the toxic effects of AHR. So we have um, taken advantage of a HR activation reporter that was made um, by um, collaborators in Dundee by knocking in CRI under control of the CYP1A1 promoter and linking that to a reporter mouse. It's a fate reporter and will um, report any cell that has activated HR. So this, in using this combination with a, with a luciferase reporter, identify cells with high HR activity. There are certain technical hitches that, that make this reporter not so super sensitive because um, of the very rapid shutdown of HR activation by the other two enzymes. It's a very transient expression, but cells that express as high HR activity report and just to give you a quick overview of how <clears throat> important the HR activation is in the gut, you see here the scenario under normal food, food supplemented with the I3C proligand, or um, mice that got an injection of this toxic um, ligand 3 methyl codantrin, and the, the whole intestinal area really lights up. So I just want to introduce um, some tools that we are using for HR pathway um, analysis. So we made, based on this finding that the um, feedback um, loop is so important, we made a mouse in which we put the um, CYP1A1 activity under control of the ubiquitously active ROSA26 promoter. So taking it out of control from the HR and making it constitutively active. And um, with permutations that we can have either whole body overexpression of CYP101 or linking it um, to specific cell types. And what we, what we found, I don't have time to show all the details, is that the constitutive degradation of HR ligands that is the consequence of, of this overactive enzyme results in reduced HR signaling and phenocopies HR deficiency. So I will call these mice ligand deficient mice. In contrast, however, to, we have also mice in which we have a complete lack of the whole pathway under control of the intestinal specific willing cre promoter, HR, um, flox mice. So these lack all, all HR. And the, the difference is these mice have the pathway and can, this can potentially be manipulated, whereas in these mice it's completely absent. So to just show you an example of the physiological consequences of HR mutations, we work a lot in the lab with the 
um, in Citrobacter rodentium infection, the so gram negative enteric bacterium that um, mimics human um, infection to enteropathogenic E. coli, colonizes the cecum and the distal colon and is really cytopathic for um, intestinal epithelial cells. HR knockout mice um, are highly susceptible and, and one of the reasons for this is that these mice lack ILC3 and that is the, the early initial source of IL-22 which is important in repairing damage in this infection. And HR is also very important in, for the induction of an IL-22 response in Th17 cells, which is the later phase in Citrobacter um, infection. So without this protective mechanism, of course, the mice are very vulnerable. And you can see that here in Citrobacter staining with red, that's where um, um, it's it's um, binding to the to the um, epithelium, but it doesn't get any further in the wild type mouse. Whereas in the AHR deficient mice and the ligand deficient mice, Citrobacter can penetrate all the way um, throughout the epithelium, which results in rapid dissemination um, from the colon into the liver and the spleen. And here you can also see in, in these mice, in contrast to the wild type mice, there's no effective IL-22 response. Now, what I told you before is that mice that have this overactive enzyme system um, can be potentially manipulated. And what we tried here was to ask whether we can rescue these mice by attempts to saturate the enzyme. On the one hand, by uh, so we supplemented their diet with this indole free carbinol proligand, relying on an excess of agonist as well as an inhibitor of CYP1A1 to see whether we could cure them. And lo and behold, that worked. So mice that were on control diets succumb to infection very rapidly, whereas those on the I3C diet um, survived. And they were able to um, clear um, the bug normally like a wild type mouse. And you also can see, oops, that um, the penetration of Citrobacter throughout the epithelium has stalled. This effect was at least in the early phase, not throughout, but in the early um, two first two weeks, very IL-22 dependent because if we gave mice the diet in the presence of neutralizing anti-IL-22 antibody, the protective effect was gone again. And um, what we saw was that this same pathology occurred whether we had restricted the overactive CYP1 and 1 just to intestinal epithelial cells or whether it was all over the body. And really um, we concluded that intestinal epithelial cells and their degradation of um, incoming ligands are incredibly important um, to, to um, regulate the supply of ligands to the intestinal immune system. So we call them gatekeepers for intestinal, for AHR ligands. Now this really, um, what I told you so far, had a big immune involvement in the, in the shape of IL-22. But we also knew that there is an epithelial cell intrinsic function and that comes from looking at the behavior of these willing free AHR flux mice which lack the pathway in epithelial cells. They cannot respond to ligands. They do not induce CYP1A1. But in contrast to these other mice, their mucosal immune system is unaffected by this deficiency. And we know when we infect such mice with Citrobacter, they similarly succumb and are equally vulnerable. And one of the, the uh, clear features that we saw was that, I, I told you that citro Citrobacter is cytopathic, so it, um, epithelium needs to be repaired and, and um, 
needs to differentiate from stem cells. And this is not working effectively in mice that lack um, AHR and epithelial cells. You see here a deficiency in, in enterocyte differentiation and in goblet cells and here in histology, the, the relative lack of mucus producing goblet cells. So how does this, how do the environmental signals transmitted through HR um, affect injury repair and differentiation in the epithelium itself in the cell intrinsic manner? And for this, um, a postdoc in my lab, Kathleen Cha, um, resorted to a, a simpler tissue injury model, which is um, DSS, um, administration in water and it is well known in the field now that DSS induced injury results in the differentiation of intestinal um, epithelial cells to a fetal like state and this is a YAP1 dependent process and one can see this state um, by the expression in these stem cells of SCAR1. So we lose differentiation markers, the cell cycle re-entry and the reacquisition of stemness in this process. And the DSS um, sequence is very well characterized into an injury and ulceration phase, a repair phase, and then a return to homeostasis. So Kathleen first looked at the steady state situation in treated mice and there it was quite clear we didn't see any overall problems. There were normal numbers of endocrine goblet cells, tuft cells and um, no excessive proliferation in the crypts. But now when upon giving DSS, again that's the steady state on, on, on top wild type then the ligand deficient and then the HR deficient mice similar looking in steady state and then in the injury phase you see that induction of SCAR1 expression similarly in all situations which is um, still very prominent in the in the repair phase but what is noticeable that is by, by day 21 the epithelium of wild type mice has returned to homeostasis, whereas they're still all hell loose in the epithelium of the ligand deficient mice, and slightly less so, but also noticeable in the HR deficient epithelium. And this process um, continues and um, simply mice um, deficient in the HR pathway are unable to terminate this repair phase of the DSS. And you can also see that, uh, if I put it up, um, in, the, in the differentiation of, of goblet cells, which um, after the destruction um, leads to reconstitution um, in homeostasis, and this process is not happening in HR deficient mice. So what are the consequences of this defective injury repair and differentiation? Um, for this, we use the model, a model uh, of, of cancerogenesis, AOM given in combination with DSS in a very toned down dose and sequence because HR deficient mice are so sensitive and actually under these mild conditions wild type mice never develop any tumors but you can see that the HR mutants um, develop massive amounts of adenomas and, and even adenocarcinomas. So they are much more susceptible um, to cancerogenesis. So we have the consequence of this ordered process but we don't really know the mechanism. Let's say we have defined in this, in this process a dysregulation of the wind pathway and a particular negative regulators that are transcriptionally controlled by HR are not induced. That is one thing. Of course, we can also cure this whole process by giving the diet 
but there are many processes that are affected and we need to dissect them individually. And for this, um, Kathleen is um, resorting to organoids, which are now known to be a model of such injury-induced fetal-like stem cells because of the dissociation of the cells from the environment. Um, this re recapitulates aspects of tissue injury. And we carried out RNA-seq analysis of colon organoids from wild type and HR deficient mice in the stem cell state and four days after differentiation, which resembles the termination of repair and maturation. Um, I should also say we, we've already known from previous experiments that HR deficient organoids have a problem differentiating. So again, what we saw here that in steady state stem cell um, conditions, we did not see many differences between wild type and AHR knockout organoids, but the differences became very noticeable in the differentiated state. And we are homing in now on processes that are important for the epithelial differentiation process, such as the switch to oxfos and lipid metabolism, termination of the cell cycle and, and exit from this fetal-like program um, stem cell state. But this is where we are at the moment and um, we are throwing all kinds of resources in there to get to the bottom of this um, in, a, in a more global overview, what processes are all shaped by this environmental um, triggers through HR. So just to sum up, um, summarize, we know that very tightly regulated activation of the HR pathway is important for its function. Over and under activation causes problems and this activation by dietary as well as microbiota derived ligands is essential for maintenance of the intestinal barrier, especially after injury. And environmental signals going through HR play important roles in intestinal epithelial cells, in addition to immune cells, affecting their regeneration and differentiation. And we know that HR activation counteracts YAP signaling to mediate termination of repair process and promote differentiation. We are working on how this is done now. And I would like to acknowledge my lab in better times and current times and um, collaborators and funders. And thank you for our attention. Thank you, Gita, for 